So the reward for visiting the sick. The Rav said anyone who visits a sick person will be saved from harsh judgment in Geno. Okay. For it says, praiseworthy is he who cares for the poor. The poor is in the Torah called Dal. On the day of evil, God will deliver him. It's a time of judgment because of your help. I'm visiting the sick and helping the Dalim, Ozer Dalim. You're helping those who are impoverished. You're ho- God will save you from judgment. God will deliver you. The poor, Dal refers to the sick as it says, he will, end my, he will end my life with sickness. Isaiah 38, 12. Or from the verse that we know that Dal referring to the sick. Why are you so indis- indisposed, Dal, O son of the king? Shmuel 13, 4. Shmuel base 13.4. And evil refers to Gehenna. For it says, everything God made, he made for his sake. Even the evildoer for the day of evil. The day of retribution. Proverbs 16.4. Now, if someone visits the sick, what will be his reward? The Gemara asks, why do you ask? What do you, why are you asking for the reward? What will be his reward? We just finished saying he will be saved from the harsh judgment of Gehenna. So you know the reward. The Gemara says, what will be his reward in this world? We want to know. God will preserve him and keep him alive. And he will be praised on earth. and And you will not give him over to the desires of his enemies. Psalms 41, 3. So the Gemara expounds, God will preserve him from the evil impulse and keep him alive. So in the reward of helping, uh, visiting the sick, God will protect him from his own evil inclination and keep him alive, save him from from suffering and he will be praised on earth. Everybody will honor him and you will not give him over to the desire of his enemies. He will have friends like Naaman's friends who advised him on how to find a a cure for his leprosy. Naaman's friends came to him. He was suffering from leprosy and they advised him who to go. They went to Elisha, how to be saved from leprosy. But he should not have friends like Rehovam Rehovam friends. What, What was the issue? Who caused his kingdom to be divided? So Rehovam friends did Rehovam the opposite. The no. Mm-hmm. Yerov, that's Yerovam. Oh, this that's is Yerovam. Re, this Re, Rehovam. Rehovam. Yeah. So prompted. So you should better have friends like uh, Naaman friends that, than friends like Rehovam friends. Prompted by this last remark, the Gemara briefly digresses. We learned in a bias, Rabbi Shimon ben Elazar said, if all the people tell you to tear down and the young tell you to build, tear down and don't build. Because the destruction of the elders who are wise will result in building. While the building of the inexperienced young leads, uh, the experience, the, while the building of the inexperienced young leads to destruction. So the destruction of the elders would lead to building and the building of the young would lead to destruction. An example is the case of Rehovams, the son of Shleim Amalekh, who ignored the advice the elders gave him and took counsel with the young man. Instead of having elderly advisors he went he got advisors from the um, he got advisors from the youngs Rehovam. You should, he could have the, the best uh, advisors in the world he was the son of the king he took the young advisors and as a re, as a result the king the kingdom was divided the kingdom of Rehovam. 
The Gemara returns to the topic under discussion. Rav Sheshet, the son of Rav Idi, said, a person should not visit the sick during the first three hours of the day and not during the last three hours of the day. So they should not be discouraged from praying for that person. Why? For during the first three hours, the first three of hours of the day, a patient feels much better so that the visitor will think that there is no need to pray for him. I guess he just woke up, he feels, he feels okay. During the last three hours of his sickness, the patient feels worse, and the visitor will think that praying is hopeless. <laughs> so the best time is to come in the, after the three hours of the morning. So not the first three hours, not the first three hours, the second set. The first three hours he would think there's no need because he's feeling okay. The last three hours he's dying, God forbid, and there's no, it's hopeless, no need to pray. And in the middle it's the best time to come. R Ravin said in the name of Rav's name, from where do we know that God nourishes the sick? A person who is sick and has no appetite is sustained by God. For it says, God will fortify him on his bed of misery. Psalms 41.4 So even though he's sick, he's not eating anything, so what keeps him going? Hashem. God nourishes the sick. One second. For a person who is sick and has no appetite is sustained by God. For it says, God will fortify him on his bed of misery. That's a true Pedialyte. Ravin also said in, in Rav's name, how do we know that the Shekhinah, the Divine Presence, hovers over the bed of a person who is ill? So it's worthwhile coming, the Shekhinah is there. For it says, God will fortify him on his bed of misery. So he is there to give him strength. We learned similarly, if you come to visit a sick person, you should not sit on the bed and not on a chair or a bench in a way that you sit above the patient, but you should wear dignified clothes and sit level with the sick person on the ground because the Shekhinah hovers above the bed of a sick, of a sick person as it said, God will fortify him on his bed of misery. So you come to visit the, the sick person, you should not sit on the bed, and not on a chair or a bench. You're not supposed to sit when you visit a sick he, person? He said it's better to sit on the floor, on the ground. Or stand up. Stand up, yeah. Why is that? He said because the Shechina hovers over the bed of the sick person. So are you trying to reduce the opportunity of you getting 